Doodlebird versus Bay State Blue. So it's been nearly a month since I picked up this bottle of Bay State Blue to see what the deal was all about. And uh, we gotta we gotta end this saga. This video has been super popular. Almost 100,000 views in uh, almost one month now. So this is tons of fun. We gotta have closure to this. It's been in this pen. I've been using it. I've done some testing. There's been a lot of interesting comments in the first video. All sorts of claims and discussion. We're gonna see are those myths or uh, you know is there some truth to it as well? Can I get this pen clean? It's a demonstrator. Will this come squeaky clean? There will be a winner. Will it be Doodlebud or will it be Bay State Blue? Let's get it on. We will play safe and use protection. Ugh, holy. Wait, this reminds me of something. Might as well write this down. Now, according to the comments, apparently you should clean this pen out using a 10% bleach solution. My homemade pen wash did not uh, really do much of a job. Now, the only question I have here is do we use it the, with the fabric guard or should we go for scented? I think that answers the question right there. There's also some claims that were made that uh, they would write something in Bay State Blue, but if they leave it out in the sun for like one hour, it's it's almost gone. You can't even read it. Well, I've done a bunch of sun testing on this here. There's a little grease on there for my lunch anyways. Forget that. The test is still valid, and I'm getting some different results. But it also gave me a potentially clever idea to clean out the pen, a secret weapon. We had a little go of uh, January here in the Vancouver area recently, so there wasn't much sun out. So I thought, let's, uh, let's change the fight and bring our own UV light. Let's bring the sun to the doodlebutt table here. So uh, I'll do some accelerated testing, but then I thought, wait a second. If this is the Achilles heel of the ink, Maybe we can use it to its an advantage in our favor and maybe use it to clean the pen, huh? First things first, let's return the ink to the bottle. I got my protective mat down. It is a beautiful color. Uh, you know, I can totally see why the appeal to this. I've been using it. Uh, it is quite feathery. So that is a bit of a pain with some papers. This is, I changed it to the fine point nib. It writes nicely. I got no complaints about it, but it is a fairly saturated and also I think low surface tension ink. Hence, it does feather fairly easy, it seems. Now there is variance batch to batch, so I don't know if that's a common thing or just more prevalent in my batch, but uh, all right, farewell to that. And just one more look, like it's just a beautiful looking blue. I'm gonna get some containers get some water. We're going to go scent it, of course, and then see if we got a little trick up our sleeve here. Wait, 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 before I flush the pen out. So this was the sample. This, I put this on the dash of my car, drove around when we did have sun. It was on there for a couple hours. And then I just kind of left it up there, got sort of overcast. Sun was gone for a good week and change. And then it's been sunny again. Put it back on the dash. It was on my car seat. That's where the grease got on there. For my lunch, it leaked. And I got, this is probably total sunshine time, eight hours. You know, it's still there. It's not unlegible. Just if you didn't know what Bay State Blue was, you would think it's like a dark, you know, kind of denim blue. But let's just show it does lose its pop. So let's just go do the sample to compare. So pretty obvious, it's uh, it's lost its uniqueness. I do have other inks that look like that. That would not be hard to find something. It is hard to find something that looks like Bay State Blue. So yeah, it does have some weakness when it comes to UV light, but it doesn't completely like wash out and disappear like some claims were being made. Maybe there's a massive variance if you have a different paper. I could, yeah, I don't buy that 100%. Not so it's going to fade to nothing. So anyways, be aware of that. It loses its luster in the sun, but it, it doesn't vanish. You know what? While I'm going to be cleaning out the pen, because I have a feeling it's going to take a while, I'll set up the UV lamp right now. Just put it right on top of that writing sample. Then we'll compare, you know, have the experiment run while I'm doing this. 60 watt UV, that's not nothing. We'll call that, uh, whoop, close enough chemistry for this, for all intents and purposes for this video. That puts us at 
it's a concentrated formulas. <laughs> That's the problem. What, what uh, concentration of bleach are you using? This looks a little murky, so let's just try to balance it out, maybe. All right, all right, that's it. Let's do the initial flush. Time to refresh. Let's see. I think this water's coming out clear. Wow. <laughs> that is serious stainage. Like, look at this. Look how clear that water is. I'll put it back into the clear water. It's not even coloring. The water, like, it barely... You know, for look how clean the water is coming out of this pen. But look how much ink is still left in there. It's crystal clear water coming out. It'll let me get rid of this before something bad happens. Okay, here we go. Now, one thing I'll just show you real quick. You can see the sheen here. That red little, there it is. You can see that red sheen. You don't see it when you write. It doesn't seem to have much shading or sheen. It's a very full color. But in the pen here, it really is showing up on the feed and some of the other bits. Okay. Well, let's just here. Let's just show you what it looks like before the bleach. Mm. Well, there we are for a white background you can still see a ton of stainage on there it really hasn't come out too much so let's get out the ultrasonic cleaner right now i i don't know if i'm going to be the victor of this battle but we will try might as well fully disassemble the pen with the trusty wrench they provide it's always nice so you can take this puppy apart oh I think I goofed up a bit there, or maybe just that piston is really, really stuck against there. I think something's going on with the bleach causing a lot of friction. I'll have to get some pliers and try to pull it out. Okay, let's see how this goes. I knew I wasn't... Oh, there we go, we got it out. I wasn't imagining things. It was really uh, getting sticky. So, well, whatever. This needs a servicing, obviously, anyways. Let's put this in the bath. All right, let's see here. This is the uh, super model that I got, the really high-end one. That's mega mode. Okay, let's close that lid while it's doing that. Let's show you a little sneak peek of some other stuff I got. Check out this piece of gear. This is a new laser system I was sent by a taser. 36 watt, this has a Z axis. So this auto focuses and the depth of cut can change. That goes up and down. This has the sweetest chuck I have ever seen, you can almost call it a skookum chuck. A little West Coast reference there. But uh, yeah, this thing, I've turned it on. It sounds like a crazy uh, space machine. It looks like it's from Guardians of the Galaxy. Look at the paint job on the air box there. Anyways, so I've got a review of this coming up. And then there'll be something for you. It's still in the box here, but this is the 20 watt system plus rotary I was sent to give away to a viewer. So uh, I got to shoot the other one first, but then... We're going to be doing the giveaway with this thing. I'm excited for that. Still have some time on the clock. Let's see what's going on. Uh, I don't see anything coming off of there. Uh-oh, this isn't looking promising. Maybe I'll add a little more water to raise the level. And another sneak peek, but I'm only going to show you just the tip here. we got kind of glory hole style going. Check that out. That's going to be a good pen. Okay, so I tried some of this FiberGuard version to a clean linen whatever this means i upped i upped the concentration but yeah we got the first batch in and you can see it is starting to clear up so let's uh let's hit the button again let's see here oh i was starting to feel pretty defeated but look at that okay the bleach actually that uh that seems almost crystal clear. We got a little bit going on there. Hmm. Let's give it once more just for, for full beans here. Let's do a quick one. Let's see how the UV light is taken on. 
the ink here. That's been uh, a good hour anyways, and uh, not a lot of fading, a little bit. Not even as much as we have there. I did several hours there in the sun, so I thought the lamp could maybe do it because it's super intense and break it down. Or maybe you break it down with the lamp first and then use the bleach, or maybe the bleach is just good enough. Now keep in mind, this bleach concentration I think is quite high now. Let me just have a look. I, I haven't calibrated this meter in a long time, so to be honest, whatever number I get, like, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Let me put it in some regular water just to see. Yeah, we're all... Oh, you know, I totally did that wrong. I'm not supposed to go that deep. Oh, <laughs> I've heard that before. See how it is here with the regular water. Yeah, this meter's just all over the place. I'm doing it again. You gotta not go that deep in there. There we go. Yeah, it's gotta get calibrated. It's hooped. I'm gonna take these out, rinse them all off, get them cleaned. I'll probably run it again with just water just to get all the bleach out, and then let's have a look. Well, I think we can take the gloves off. Uh, the bleach seems to be the ticket. Look at this thing. Like, that is pretty much crystal clear. I don't think this pen has been that uh, clean in a long time. I am concerned about how the piston fits, and I got my grease. We will reassemble the pen. Um... Yeah, like it really, I mean, it's squeaky clean right now, so the friction will be higher. Ugh, come on. So I'll put some grease on here, uh, reassemble the pen, but it definitely, it changed the, the feel of the plastic. Like there was definitely a lot more friction and stiction going on there compared to if I would just clean it out with water. So yeah, I'd be concerned about cleaning up a, a high-end pen. I'm not going to clean my Mont Blanc 149 with bleach, I don't think. Uh, again, I'll put, you know, I'll put a link in the description. There's uh, some charts that are available. Some of them conflict each other a bit, but there are some charts that are available that show you different cleaners or solvents and uh, how they interact with other plastics. Because you can use one type of solvent or something on one plastic and it's totally fine. Use it on a different material and it is curtains for whatever that thing is. It can just totally dissolve it or melt it. So... Yeah, you got to be aware of that stuff as well. Okay, let's slide that in there. Well, look at that. That worked out no problem. Now, in the comments, some folks said even on the Noodler site, they talk about uh, how to clean it. You just use a 10% bleach solution and away you go. What's the big deal? Well, you know, I didn't read that stuff. I kind of like to go into things flying blind just to see what's up. And uh, maybe there's some assumptions people make or you make a new discovery along the way. It uh, You can clean out your pens. Again, I'm a little bit concerned about just how the bleach was interacting, so I'd probably stay away from my high-end pens. I don't just let me know in the comments. If uh, you clean your expensive pens with bleach, this has turned out okay. Uh, I don't have any, any issues with it. That is sparkly clean. We just see a little bit of grease in there. Uh, one thing, if you haven't seen the video I did already to address the cracking talk that they have with these Twisby Eco pens. Do check out the video I did. It was something called the Polariscope, so you can actually see with your own eyes, and I did it live on the video, um, you can see the internal stresses inside of this pen. So that's worth checking out as well. I like that kind of stuff. But there we go. You can clean out Base 8 Blue. It's not going to be Forever Blue. It has a weakness. The sun did a little bit, but not as much as whether people were claiming. So I don't think my idea of using a UV lamp to clean it would would work. Not clever enough with that. I thought I was on to something, but it didn't. Whatever. No big deal. It's worth trying. We'll leave it there. If there's some other stuff you want me to test with this, uh, I'm open to that. But I have a bunch more stuff coming up, like I showed the laser and some other really cool things. Leave it there for now. Hit subscribe if you haven't. Catch you next time.